We're gonna get right into it today and I'm gonna show you how I make my chicken cutlets. You can make them a bunch of different ways. I got regular breadcrumbs, I got panko breadcrumbs. We're gonna see if there's a little bit more crunch with these. We're gonna check them out. I'm gonna show you how I make them. I know there's a lot of different ways you can make them, but people make them a lot of different ways. It's like how many different ways? They're so versatile. Chicken parm, top of the food chain, obviously. Chicken ziti broccoli, which is what I'm gonna use these for. It's probably gonna be in other episodes, so keep an eye out for that. You can use them for chicken cutlet sandwiches. Forget about it, so good. Put them on a nice roll, ah, so good. You can put them on a plate with just some dipping sauce. You can eat them plain. You can do a thousand different things. You could even make chicken cordon bleu if you want to transfer yourself back to 1990. And I know what you're thinking. How's this Irish guy gonna show me how to make chicken cutlets? Chicken cutlets is an Italian thing. You're gonna like this guy, he's all right. He's a good fella, he's one of us. I get it, but I'm gonna show you how I make them, so let's get started. I'm Dave, and you're watching Dave's Taste Buds, and welcome back. So, episode today, chicken cutlets, we're gonna get right into it. First of all, there's a lot of moving parts for chicken cutlets. They don't just go from your supermarket to your plate like that. There's a lot. You gotta get your chicken, you gotta trim it, you gotta pound it, you gotta bread it, flour it, fry it up, but it's worth it. So just stick with me. I'm gonna make this quick, and I'm gonna show you the best way to do it. So, first things first, chicken breast. So if you see on here, it's just got all kinds of extra, you know, pockets of fat, things that never got trimmed off. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. This piece right here, take your sharp knife, just kind of give it a quick slice, get that off of there. Flip it over, check it out, make sure that you don't have any like little bits of bone in it or anything like that. You gotta get it out, make sure this looks good. I like to just trim off some of this extra stuff. I just like to start with a nice, clean product. Check it out for anything that looks like it needs to be cut off. This was not too bad. Here's the trick, guys. Obviously, this thing's like two inches thick. It's way too thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it flat on the, on the cutting board. I'm gonna put my hand flat on top of it. Take your knife, just keep it right parallel with the countertop and the cutting board, and just slice it across. This is a technique called butterflying. So you just get right back in there. Just like that. Once it starts to open up, Slice it down like this. Now, this is gonna take practice, guys. I've done this a million and a half times. Practice makes uh, perfect. That way, you know, come with you. This one's kind of butchered wrong, so I'm just gonna get this out of here. See this, see this little, anything that I don't like the looks of it, I just get rid of it. Because if you start with an inferior product, you're gonna end with, a, with an inferior product and you don't wanna do that. So, that's it. Gets a little bit thinner. Some are thin enough as they are, something like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that right there so we can bread that up later. That one looks good to me. This could be a little bit thinner. It's a little bit, you know, tough sometimes when they're this big. So I like to take a plastic bit Ziploc bag. You can do this with, you know, you can put saran wrap on top of it. I just like to, to do it just to try to cut down on, you know, last thing you need is to, you know, splatter raw chicken all over your kitchen. That's the other thing too, guys. Wash these and then dry. Make sure they're dry. Don't deal with a lot of wet stuff. Put that right in your cutting board. Meat mallet of any kind. I happen to have grown to really like this flat one. It's got spikes on this side. You can unscrew it, flip it over, it's flat on the other side. So I like to give it a little bit of a pound like that. And don't just come straight down on it. If you give it a little bit to the sides, a little bit, just like that. Give it a flip, same thing on the side. Not only does it pound it out flatter, it, it gives it a little bit of tenderization. And that's gonna end up with a big, huge, delicious cut. So that's what you want. Pull that out. There you go. It's gonna come up looking just like that. Looks real nice. That's actually real huge. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the rest of this prepped up. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through the breading. I'm gonna fry them up, and then I'm gonna check them out. So now we got our chicken cut, we got it pounded out flat, I season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I turn around and I set up this breading station. Breading station, very important, you've probably heard it before, if you haven't, I'm gonna teach you something special today. Wet, dry, wet, dry, that's it. Chicken starts off wet, goes into your seasoned flour. For this recipe, I keep it really simple, it's just a little salt and pepper, all-purpose flour, that's it. Eggs, I don't add water or milk to it, just straight eggs, whip it up, fork, whisk, whatever you want to do, get it nice and whisked up. 
Typically, I would only have one or the other. I have regular bird crumbs here, and I also have panko because I'm going to test them side by side, see if I like one better than the other. So that's it, guys. Start with wet, dry, wet, dry. Same thing. Have a wet hand, have a dry hand. Otherwise, you start crossing back and forth, you're going to look like you have breadcrumb, you know, gloves on. You don't want to get into that. So easiest way to do it, take a nice piece of chicken. Told you I had a lot of chicken to cut up. This is probably like close to nine pounds. This, this is half of a chicken cutlet. Lay that right into the flour. See that now, dry hand. Get a little flour on there, dust it off. Make sure it's coated. Again, these chickens are huge. These cutlets are uh, pretty big. I like to use pie plates, I always have. I got a bunch of pie plates. I always, you know, use pie plates for all kinds of stuff. So I have a bunch of them. You can use a pan, you can use whatever you feel comfortable with. Just make sure it has high enough edges so you don't just get flour, eggs, breadcrumbs. You'll just make a disaster in your kitchen. So now that we've got flour on here, I'm gonna lightly lay it right into our egg. Switch over to the dry hand. I mean our wet hand, do that. Get a nice coating of that. We're gonna put this right into the regular breadcrumbs. Try that one out first. Switch to our dry hand little dry stuff on there so that your fingertips don't get wet. Things start sticking to it. Flip it. Give a little push down. Make sure, you, I mean, you're going to want to make sure you get cutlets nice and breaded. There you go. And that's it. Do yourself a favor. Don't skip the flour step. Don't just go, you know, chicken to egg wash to breadcrumbs or do breadcrumbs twice. Make that extra step and use the flour because that's what's going to really let your breadcrumbs grip to the chicken because the egg's going to grab the flour then you're going to be able to get a lot of nice chicken all set with your breadcrumbs lay that on your pan i'm going to go ahead i'm going to get the rest of these breaded up i'm going to keep my breadcrumbs and my panko separate and then i'm going to show you how to fry them up now we're at a critical point now now's the time where we're going to fry up these chicken cutlets why are you whispering? I'm not going to tell you for the bazillion time if you've seen my channel how much I like my cast iron pan, but we're using it again today. Now, I used Filippo Berrio olive oil. I always do. I know they make an EVOO kind, they do. But I like the flavor of this one a little bit better when it comes to cutlets, so that's what I use. As far as how much to use, we're going to give it almost like a shallow fry. So, I mean, you're going to want to give, you know, quarter of an inch to half an inch, something like that. You're gonna to wanna to have some oil in there. We're gonna look for a medium high heat. This might be a little bit higher than that, but we're gonna give it a shot. Burn is a little bit different than my range top, but we're gonna give it a shot. So, first things first, cooking anything like this, you're gonna to wanna to lay it into the pan away from you. You don't wanna to to splatter yourself, you get burnt, you don't need that. So we're gonna take our chicken. This is our regular breaded, we're just gonna do that. We're going to get that nice sizzle. That means our oil is at a great temperature. I'm going to try to can squeeze our panko in here just so I can cook them side by side. Again, we don't want to crowd our pan. So we don't want to try to jam too much in here. Now the first thing that this is going to do is it's immediately going to drop the temperature of your oil, putting cool chicken into it, cool whatever into it. Um, so we're going to always want to be monitoring our heat. You don't want it too hot because you don't want to just burn the outside and not cook the inside. You don't want it too cold because what's going to happen is the breadcrumbs are then going to soak up all the moisture from that olive oil and they're going to take longer to cook and you could dry them out. And it's just going to soak up so much of that oil, it's going to feel like you're eating you know, an olive oil cup. You don't want that either. Five minutes later. Pinch it, give it a little quick look. Looking good. We're actually going to take this and lay it away from us. And every cutlet's going to have a different thickness, it's going to have a different thinness. So you just want to you know, keep moving around the pan. You got to make sure they're cooked so if it takes a little bit longer to do one. Like I said, patience is the key when it comes to cooking the cutlets. So just be patient. This pack of one looks ready to flip, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Quick look. Ah. A nice color. That's what you want. Another trick, if you're ever unsure about 
cooked or not, and you don't have a thermometer, and you don't want to bother taking out the temperature because you don't trust it for whatever reason, turn your oven on really high because you're going to want to maintain the crisp, but you want to cook the inside on it pretty high. Put them back in there for a couple minutes. If it makes you feel better, you can always go ahead and do that. Right now, we're getting some fantastic color on this tanker one. The regular bread comes is looking good. Oh, yeah. See that? See that single? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to lay this one right on this. I like using a sheet pan with a wire rack. I find that if you put it right against the flat surface, even if you have a piece of parchment paper or whatever, it tends to um, soak up more of the olive oil. It takes the crunch away a little bit. So do yourself a favor, get yourself one of these um, sheet pan racks to put it right in there. That way you're going to keep your, your cutlets nice and crisp. This one's going to take a little bit longer, it's a little thicker. Now while these are cooking, perfect time, like I always say, while these are cooking, get the kitchen cleaned up so you kind of clean up behind yourself. That breading station can make a real mess. So while these are cooking, you know, turn around, get your stuff in the, in the dishwasher, wash them by hand, however you do it. Just get that done, which is, you know, what I'm about to do as soon as this one's done. I'm going to get everything working and do some cleaning up. So you don't have to think about it later on. If you need to add more oil, now it's kind of a good time. Just before you take out your other cutlet, you don't want to add olive oil, cold olive oil to your hot pan while you're cooking something because like the same with the chicken, it's going to drop that temperature and it's going to change your cook. So do yourself a favor and don't add oil to it while you have something cooked. Looking good. I'm going to pop this one up. I'm going to get the rest of these cooked off, then we're going to cut them up. Oh, and I'm going to taste them and they're going to be so good. Trust me. So that's it everybody. That's it. Oh wait. Come on. Just kidding. I'm not going to miss out on the best part, for me anyway, other than showing you how to cook. It's I get to taste it. So, obviously, one of my favorite parts. Panko, oh, I can already tell. Crisp, I can hear it just by picking it up. Regular bread comes, same way. Breaded, cooked. If you want to check the temp, 165. Get yourself a meat thermometer, preferably digital. Hold it in the pan like this with this obviously. Hold it up like this, put it in from the side, get that tip right down into the middle. 165, make sure. That's it. Beautiful, looking, looking beautiful. Before I taste these guys, do me a favor, take a second. Down in the right hand lower corner, you'll see this little thing that hits, says subscribe. Just hit it, takes a second, doesn't cost anything, supports the channel. Do me a favor, go ahead and do that. Like the episode, but certainly subscribe. So, now, like I said before, a thousand different things you could do with this, but I'm just gonna taste it just like that. Look at that steam coming out of it. It's still juicy. Ah, good. Take an edge so it's nice and crispy. Ooh, hot, right out of the pan. A little worried, actually. Mmm, oh. I honestly think panko is the way to go, especially if you're going to do it for chicken parm, something that's going to be, you know, it's going to be submerged, covered in sauce. You're going to want to keep that extra Christmas, Chris, Christmas, Take two. keep that extra crispness. I mean, it's the middle of the summer. What am I thinking Christmas for? Because I love Christmas. Either way, breadcrumb, same thing, cut it, steaming. Juicy, ah, nice. Cut a small piece so I don't spend all day chewing on it. Mmm. That's good too. You can't go wrong. Chicken cutlets, you cannot go wrong. They're so good, so versatile. You can do so many different things with them. As long as you got chicken, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, fry them up. A thousand different dinners you can do. So, Go cook something.